Good morning and thank you for coming. My name is John Seaver. I am an HDLS project manager with Pannoni Associates. Today I will be presenting on 3D tank analysis with a ferrofocus 3D scanner in Qubit PointSense plant. I will be showing you a case study where Pannoni Associates was able to use PointSense plant to analyze an above ground storage tank. Before we get into talking about the case example, I'd like to give you a little bit of background on myself and Pannoni Associates. Pannoni is a multidiscipline engineering firm providing services in science, planning, and design consulting. We also provide design build services to private and government agencies around the world. All of our services are provided globally. We are an employee owned company. We have 1,200 employees spread out over 28 offices in the United States. We are ranked within the top 100 firms by Engineering News Record, and we have received numerous awards for various projects and for our corporate culture. Also, we are celebrating our 50th anniversary now. Now for a little bit of history about myself. Again, my name is John Seaver. I am the HDLS project manager for Newark, Delaware. I also manage all of our HDLS services for our design build group. I have been with Pannoni for 10 years in the survey department. I have over 15 years of engineering and survey experience, and I've been using Autodesk products for all of the 15 years. In addition to that, I have been using Ferro products for the last three years, including the scanning software, scanners, and Qubit. Now about the project. Some time ago, one of our clients contacted us about one of their storage tanks that they were having some issues with. It is a 10,000 barrel above ground storage tank. It contains aviation jet fuel. It was constructed in 1985. Since 1985, it's had various shell repairs over its lifespan, including some various upgrades to bring it into compliance. It had been out of service for the last three years due to some issues that they had found when they had completed some of the upgrades. Some of the problems that they found was that the floating pan inside of the tank was binding up at the top of the tank. Also, it appeared that the tank had been leaning to one side, as well as when the tank was being in service, fuel would surge from the tank and cause pressure issues downstream. So how do we find the problems with the tank? Well, the very first thing that we did was we got together with our design build engineers and we looked at all the available information that we had on hand, plans, records, reports, and it came to the conclusion that the best way to find out what is really going on with this tank was to go down to the site and actually scan the interior and exterior of the tank and the surrounding area. That was the only way we were going to get a real condition assessment of the facility. So we loaded our gear up and off we went. So we went down, scanned the tank, we collected our data, we brought it back, we imported it into Autodesk Recap so that we could bring it into the various Autodesk applications. And then we created a project in Civil 3D as our beginning. Once we created our Civil 3D project, we began to use Qubit to begin our analysis of the data. And then once we were complete our analysis of our data, we would bring in our point cloud into Trimble RealWorks, and we would use Trimble RealWorks to generate our documentation and reports in addition to the Qubit plans that we were submitting. So what equipment did we use to scan and analyze the tank? Well, we used our Faro S120 Focus 3D laser scanner. We also took with us two cases of ATI spheres and our paper targets. As part of our field package, we also carry with us a Lenovo W520 laptop that is completely outfitted with 32 gigs of RAM and dual solid state drives. On this project, we used Faro Scene 5.3 to register all of our clouds. And we used Autodesk Recap for the use of bringing in all of our point cloud data into the various Autodesk products. We used Autodesk Civil 3D to generate our plans and our heat maps. And we used Qubit PointSense 
to do our analysis on the point clouds. In addition to Qubit, we also use Trimble RealWorks as our report tool. So what did all of our point sense plant data show us? Well, first, it showed us that we had severe deformation in various locations at or near the prior repairs to the tank shell. We knew from the standards that we were working with that we could not exceed a total of four inches of deformation in or out on the tank shell, but the plans were telling us that we had eight inches or more deformation around the perimeter. Also, we were able to determine that the pan wipers were not in contact with the shell areas at the deformation locations, allowing contaminants into the fuel system. Also, with Point Sense Plant, we were able to confirm to our client that the tank was not leaning. We were able to generate a foundation report showing at various locations around the tank perimeter, the elevations only fluctuated a quarter of an inch. Additionally, we confirmed that the pan was binding in the top of the tank from the deformation areas. So why did we choose Point Sense Plant? Well, simply put, it was for ease of use. We were already using Point Sense Plant as our standard workflow for working with point clouds. So it was just natural to use the Point Sense Plant tank module to analyze the tank shell on this project. Also, we were able to use the tank shell program to generate a heat map showing all the deformation areas. By generating these various heat maps, we were able to show our client visually all the areas of deformation. In addition to the heat maps, we were also able to generate a tabular table of the data. This tabular table was invaluable to our structural engineers. They were able to take this tabular data and input it into their various structural applications and do their own analysis as well. PointSense also allowed us to cut sections through the point cloud and create section maps. With these section maps, we were able to align them with the heat maps so that they could easily show the areas of deformation in two different views. So let's talk about a little bit of the challenges on this project. Well, first off, we had to overcome some issues with our client. They had the prior firm that was doing the repairs on the tank scan the tank and try to figure out why they were having so many problems with it. So when we came in and approached our client and told them that we were going to scan this tank, they were a little bit hesitant at first. So we had a little bit of an uphill climb here just to justify why we wanted to rescan this site again. One of those reasons for it being an uphill climb, this was a very high profile project for our client. So any more issues, delays, just wasn't an option for this project. We had to deliver on this project for them. Also, the time frame. This was a very compressed time frame for this type of project. And this included all the engineering services as well, not just the scanning services. We had to deliver this project in three weeks or less. So that included all of our travel, the scanning, the reports, the analysis, everything had to be done in three weeks. Also, to complicate things, this site was a very highly secure site in the southwestern part of the U.S. So we had some issues with arranging access and actually getting into the site and actually having enough time to complete our scan sessions. Also, we did a number of scans on this site. We wanted to make sure we were bringing the field back into the office. That was our goal on this when we went down there. We had one shot to get in, and it was one shot to get everything we needed for the engineers. So we did a total of 25 scans at quarter and half resolution. Also, when we did get on site, we had to deal with the weather. The very first day, it rained on us. So we did all of our interior work inside the tank on the first day. Then the second day, when we were doing the outside scans, we had 90 degree heat and full sun. So it was, it was a challenge from day to day. And then to top it off, we had the bees. The bees really loved our yellow safety vest. 
So what was some of the results on this project? Well, first off, we actually saved our client from having to tear down this tank. That was their main concern all along. They had spent upwards of $7 million over the last few years to make repairs on this tank, and they were worried that they were going to lose all of that investment into this tank. So we were actually able to show them using PointSense plant that there was only certain areas that needed to be repaired. So we actually saved our client money. Also, by using PointSense plant, we were able to scan, analyze the data, and create all of our reports in less than seven days. So that allowed our engineers enough time to analyze my data and able to determine what the next course of action was going to be. So, with all that being said, our client was so impressed with what we were able to do, they actually extended our contract and allowed us to do a post-construction as-built which involved a new interior and exterior scan of the tank. We also provided them updated strapping tables and a containment dike scan and volume report and an updated foundation survey showing that the tank had not moved during construction. Well, with all projects, there's always room for improvement. And some of the areas that we saw we needed improvement was we needed to streamline our data extraction process. Qubit worked flawlessly, but working on these compressed timelines, we needed to have more staff trained in using the tank analysis software. For the most part, it was just myself and one other staff member working on this. So to make it more efficient, we could actually train more staff and put them on this project to turn the product around quicker. Also, we learned we could reduce the number of field staff from three to two. We were concerned because of access and safety issues that we would need three personnel. But when we finished the project, we actually determined we could actually do this safely with two personnel, two scanning personnel, and a health and safety officer. Additionally, the biggest hurdle that we had to cross on this project was our data storage. This project alone exceeded 200 gigabytes in data. With all of our reports, the point clouds, everything, we actually had problems storing this project, so we needed to increase our network storage capacity. If you have any questions about this project or PointSense plant and how we used it on this project and others, please feel free to contact me. You can contact me at my phone number here on this slide, or you can reach out to me via any of the above links on social media. Thank you, and have a good day.